to the wonderful world of mathematics. In this video, we will be talking about sets. What a set is, what the basic set concepts are, and how we illustrate them. Hi, once again. I just came from a classroom and I need to organize a lot of my personal things. Come on, help me do it. I can sort, I can sort, I can sort, sort, sort. I can put them into groups and I can sort, sort, sort. I can sort by color, I can sort by size. sorting my things. Let's take a closer look at them. We have the fiction books, the textbooks, the awards, the erasers, the pencils, the markers, and the ball pens. In mathematics, these can be called sets. Then, what is a set? A set may be defined as a collection of well-defined objects called elements. I would like to emphasize the word well-defined. How do we know if an object is well-defined? Let's have these two groups of sets. Group A with two sets, set A being the set of current NBA teams, and set B as the set of roots. On the other hand, we have group B with set C as the set of enjoyable movies, and set D as the set of great Philippine presidents. Which of these two groups have well-defined elements? Let's take a look at set A first. I will ask you now, is Los Angeles Lakers an element of set A? What about Barangay Ginebra Kings? You're right! Los Angeles Lakers is a member of set A, while Barangay Ginebra Kings is not an element of set A. Let us now shift to set B, the set of roots. For our first example, we have the giraffe, while for the second example, we have the avocado. Let's see the correct answers. Is a giraffe a member of set B? Of course not, because a giraffe is an animal, while avocado is clearly a member of set B. Moving on to group B, set C is the set of enjoyable movies. The first movie here is John Wick, and the second movie is Fifty First Dates. Do you think there are elements of set C? The answer would be correct, wrong, or maybe. We now have the last set, set D, being the set of great Philippine presidents. Our first president here is Emilio Aguinaldo. Of course, he is the first president, but is he a great Philippine president? And our next president here is President Duterte. Is he a great Philippine president? The answer would be correct, wrong, or maybe. Can you now see the difference between the two groups? How can we say that objects are well defined? If you notice, in group A, we can easily identify if an object is an element of a certain set, while in group B, it's hard to say if an object is an element of a certain set. You have to take a look at the identifiers or adjectives used. If a set uses a certain adjective, it surely is not a well-defined set. 
There are two ways of writing sets. The first method is called roster method. In this method, all elements are listed separately by commas. The second method is what we call the rule method or set builder notation. In this method, the elements of the set are described as one. Here is our first example, set A being the set of primary colors. How do you write it in roster form? As we said a while ago, you have to indicate all the elements of the set. And we have set A containing blue, red, and yellow. For the other method, we call it rule form, here is how we write it. We read it as set of all x's such that x is a primary color. If you notice in the rule form, we use a general variable x, which represents an object in a certain set. And we also use a vertical bar which stands for such that. Also notice the verb is. We always represent the element in the singular form. Now we have our second example. Set B as the set of multiples of 7 less than 45. In roster form, we have to list down all the elements of set B. And they are 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, and 42. And in rule form, we have to remember to use the variable x, the vertical bar which stands for such that, the linking verb is, and also we have to describe the elements of the set using the singular word multiple. Therefore, we can write set B in rule form as the set of all x's such that x is a multiple of 7 less than 45. The third basic set concept that we will discuss is cardinality. What is cardinality? Cardinality refers to the number of elements in a set. In symbol, we can use the small letter N followed by parenthesis and the name of the set inside the parenthesis. Also, we could use the symbol for absolute value. To clearly understand what cardinality is, here are four sets. Set A is the set of primary colors. How many elements does this set have? The correct answer would be three. Therefore, we will write N of A is three, or the cardinality of set A is three. For the second example, set B as the set of multiples of 7 less than 45. This is the same set in the example a while ago. The cardinality of B is equal to 6 because there are 6 elements of this set. For the third set, we have the set of plants that bark. N of C equals 0. Of course, there are no plants that bark. For set D, we have the set of even numbers. If we try to think of it, the first even number that we can think of is 2, followed by 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on and so forth. Therefore, the cardinality of D would be equal to infinity. Based on its cardinality, a set can be classified as finite or infinite. These are the two basic set concepts that we will be discussing next along with null set. What is a finite set? From the word itself, finite, which means can be counted, a finite set is a set which has a countable or limited number of elements. Let's have these examples. 
set A as the set of vowels in the Filipino alphabet. How many vowels does the Filipino alphabet have? There are five. Therefore, A is a finite set. For a second example, set B as the set of integer factors of 100. What are the integer factors of 100? They are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, 50, and 100. There are 9 integer factors of 100. Therefore, set B is also a finite set. The opposite of finite set is infinite set. An infinite set is a set which has a limitless number of elements, meaning the cardinality is infinity. Here we have two examples, set C as the set of numbers between 1 and 2. Give me a number between 1 and 2. Are there more than 10? Are there more than 100? In reality, there is an infinite number of numbers between 1 and 2. Therefore, set C is an infinite set. For the second example, we have set D as the set of multiples of 10. If I ask you to write down the elements of this set, you will start with 10, followed by 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on and so forth. It will go endlessly. Therefore, set D is an infinite set. Let's try these four additional examples and identify whether each set is finite or infinite. Set A, set of primary colors. Since there are three elements of this set, therefore we can say that set A is finite. For set B, we have the set of multiples of 7 less than 75. The elements are 7, 14, 21, until 70. If you count them, there will be 10 elements. Therefore, set B is also finite. What about set C? Set C is the set of plants that bark. How many elements does this set have? Of course, there's none. This set is what we call a null set. A null set is a set which has zero elements. For example, we have set D as the set of months in a year which begins with the letter B. There's none. What about set E? The set of colleges and universities in Lumban. Can you give me one element of this set? There's none also. And did you know that null set is a special type of finite set. Therefore, set C can be classified as finite. Our last set here is set D, the set of even counting numbers. If we write this in roster form, the elements will be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and so on and so forth. Can we identify the last element of this set? It is impossible. It is limitless. Therefore, it is infinite. Set D is an infinite set. The last two basic set concepts that we will be covering are equal sets and equivalent sets. What is the difference between the two? Equal sets are sets which have the same elements. It means it has the same cardinality and the same actual elements. For equivalent sets, these sets refer to those which have the same cardinality only. On your screen are six sets. Set A as the set of vowels in the word algebra. Set B as the set containing 4, 3, 2, and 5. 
set C is the set of all X's such that X is a month in a year. Set D as the set of positive odd numbers less than 25. Set E as the set of all X's such that X is a female Philippine president. And set F as the set containing 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, until 23. Can we identify which among these sets are equal and which of them are equivalent? The best way to do it is to write all of these sets in roster form. Now we're talking. All of our sets are now written in roster form. Let's try to remember the difference between equal sets and equivalent sets. From our definition, equal sets are sets which have the same cardinality and the same elements, while equivalent sets are sets which only have the same cardinality. Let's analyze. Let us focus on sets D and F. If we try to look at them, they have the same elements. Therefore, we can say that sets D and F are equal sets. What about if we include set C? Set C is the set of months in a year. Of course, they are January, February, March, until December. And its cardinality is 12. If we find the cardinality of set D, it's also 12. Therefore, they are of the same cardinality. Then we can say that sets C, D, as well as F are equivalent sets. This time we have sets A, B, and E. Set A has the elements A and E. Set B has the elements 4, 3, 2, and 5. Set E has the elements Cory Aquino and Gloria Arroyo. Let us now take a look at their cardinalities. Set A has two elements. Set B has four elements. And set E has two elements. If we try to look for equal sets and equivalent sets, we'll find that sets A and E are equivalent sets because they have the same cardinality. on basic set concepts. Hope you learned a lot. See you on the next video. Bye-bye!